Good Sunday evening, everyone. So great to be with you guys. This is an open forum, but this is about dating. So we're going to talk about something. I think that there's over 50% of people that are single and so many Christians in church that are single. And we need to talk about this. Let's be transparent. I pray I can help you guys. I really pray I can help you guys. Uh, Pastor Don Wilkerson was not able to be with me today. He will be this week. I, it was his birthday today. So he was celebrating it with his family, which I said, go ahead, enjoy yourself. Don't worry. He's 81. He will catch up with us this week. And I'm excited to have him on. So that's the update on that. I'm waiting for some of you guys to come on and we're going to talk transparently about what are we going through? What we need to talk about this. Don't you think we need to talk about this? A couple of you guys had questions for me as I'm waiting for some of you guys to come on. Uh, we're going to talk about eight things that Christians, eight types of people Christians should never date. And you know, this video could be for non-Christians too, really. It, it could, it's really for everyone. This is wisdom because God's wisdom is without uh, time and reason. And, and he, I mean, he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And he has all wisdom. He knows what we need. And we also have testimonies. Hey, uh, hey you guys, Debbie, I see you guys coming on. Thank you so much. I'm going to look for your questions. You guys also asked me a couple of questions, okay? Have I ever been married? Yes. Yes, I have. I've been married twice in my 20s. So both uh, marriages were uh, ended in domestic violence. The men were uh, uh, violent to me. Hey, Debbie's been married 50 years. We can see half your face. Half? Really? Why, why only half? Seriously, tell me, all you guys only see half my face, tell me now, because I want to make sure you guys can see me. Are, are you guys only seeing half my face? So uh, I'll continue to talk and tell me if you guys can see my whole face, okay? Because I want you to see all of me, not parts of me. Oh, okay, Aaron sees my whole face. Thank you, Aaron. So it must be your phone. Maybe check your phone. So, okay, I was married twice in my 20s. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, thanks, Debbie. Thanks for letting me know. And uh, so I was married twice in my 20s. Both were domestic uh, violence cases. Hey, Larissa! Uh, okay, awesome. So I was married twice in my 20s. Both were domestic violence. Both men physically abused me and unrepentive. Uh, and uh, one of them was in the church, the other one was not. Uh, and so uh, there could be no reconciliation because there was no repentance. And I did not want to be killed. I did not want to be abused. I didn't want to be maimed. I did not want uh, my life to end. So I had to leave. Well, actually, the police got involved both times, especially the second time. The guy was arrested three times and he went to jail and then he went to jail for stalking. And uh, so uh, the, the, the state put a no contact order on him for two years. And this man lied through his teeth and never repented to the church, never repented to his family. I was the uh, perpetrator and he turned into the victim. And you know the story behind that, that's what happens with abusers. So to this day, he's never repented and he's gonna have to stand before God one day. I have forgiven him both of them, and it's out of my hands. It is no longer a part of my life. Thank you, Gareth. That is so sweet. So yes, I have been married and in long-term relationships, and uh, I live a very godly life. I live sexually pure, uh, and I've lived sexually pure for many, many years, and uh, I practice what I preach. I am not a hypocritical Christian, so these things that I share with you today, and I don't have any children, if that answers your question as well. Someone asked me about the Christmas coupon, the movie that was uh, originally made for Hallmark. They presented it to Hallmark last year and they did not get in time for, uh, for Hallmark to receive it. So that's what they told me. So anyways, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I've forgiven him. Yes, uh, Larissa, forgiveness is the key to freedom. It is very serious. It is the only key. And I did not want to develop a root of bitterness. So I want to talk to you guys, men and women tonight, because I have had a, quite a bit of experience in dating. And the Bible, truly the Bible does not talk about dating. I mean, there is no dating in the Bible. There's courtship. But there's not dating. I mean, God does not intend for each one of us to keep going around kissing a million men or women or sleeping with them or holding hands with them or, or hang, you know, just touchy-feely or whatever it is you want to do. And then keep tasting all these men and women and, and mixing bodily fluids and, uh, and playing musical chairs. That's not God's intention. Dating is not in the Bible. So, let's get into it. Eight types of people you don't want to date. Number one, number one, people who jump from relationship to relationship. So, if you're kissing a lot of frogs and you're kissing a lot of men and women, that is not God's intentions. And if you're dating someone, you've got to find out their history. You got to ask a lot of questions because questions reveal character. Questions reveal a person's heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So they're going to tell you who they are through their mouth. Write this down, you guys. This will save you a lot of heartache, okay? So you got to ask them a lot of questions. Are they from relationship to relationship? Do they jump in one bed and get out of another and jump into another bed? Do they jump from person to person? If they can't be alone, hey William, hey Patrick, hey Christine, if they cannot be alone and get right with God and have Jesus as their source, that means they are not good marriage material. Because they have to learn how to be alone. They have to be. They have to learn how to rely on Jesus. They have to learn how to control their fleshly desires and to put them to the cross. They have to die to them. They have to have a walk where they show that they can live godly and be holy and make right choices and have good character and have a life of repentance and have a life of. Uh, humbleness where they really feel like you know God is working on them and they tell you about it they tell you about you know what God's been working on me this is what he's been doing with me I'm not going from relationship to relationship anymore uh, God is uh, talking to my heart he's working with me he's freeing me from bondages from my past from my childhood from addiction personality addictive personalities from having to need a man all the time or having to need a woman all the time. Uh, I don't have to have that anymore because my source is Jesus. Please share this video. This is going to help a lot of you. I promise you. So ask a lot of questions. Are they jumping from person to person? You don't want a person like that because you don't know what kind of diseases they're carrying. You don't know what beds they've been in. You don't know what kind of soul ties they're bringing into the marriage bed. You don't know how many women they're thinking about. You don't know how many women they're illegally married to for the two will become one flesh. You don't know. Okay? So that's number one. Are they jumping from relationship to relationship? Do they only date Christians? I mean, what character are they? If they say they're Christian and they have not asked the other person if, you know, Hey, were you dating a Christian before? Like, since you've been a Christian for five years, have you been dating Christians? If they say, well, they say they're a Christian, I say, well, what does that mean? They say they're a Christian. Like, do you vet them out? Are they really a Christian? Or are you okay dating any type of man or any type of woman? Like, how important is that to you? If that's not important to them, and they... Talk, do the Christian talk and the Christianese language, but they don't really walk the walk, y'all better run. Y'all better run because sheep come in wolf's clothing or wolves come in sheep's clothing. Sorry, the other way around. 
wolves come in sheep's clothing and they are going to take you down ladies gentlemen those kind of people are going to pull you down they're going to get you involved in all kinds of sin bad music sex seduction drinking partying compromise are they hopping around okay the next one number two second type of person to avoid to run from is the non-christian let me take a sip of water see as christians we don't believe it sorry i'm spitting water everywhere we don't believe in missionary dating we're not dating people to convert them to jesus that is a eh, red flag red flag red flag <laughs> if they are not a christian do not date them jesus said only to mary and the lord he said that you cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers what does righteousness have in common with unrighteousness or light with darkness or christ with belial which is satan you cannot date an unbeliever because you know what an unbeliever because god's trying to protect y'all that's what he's doing. How many times have we met someone and we're like, well, they say they're Christian. They say that they go to church. They're even in the choir or they might be on the praise team or they might be in greeting a greeter in the church, but they're truly not saved. They're truly not a Christian. So you got to vet them out. You got to find out what is their testimony and people can even lie about their testimony. Please share this video. Very serious. This is very serious because too many people are in bondage and in sin to ungodly soul ties and relationships and they can't get out. And now it's too late and they're heartbroken. I don't want you to be heartbroken. I want you to be successful in your walk with God. I love you guys. Jesus loves you more than I do. And Christ who lives in me loves you. That's why I do these kind of videos to help you. So the non-Christian, I mean, they, they, you cannot open blinded eyes. You are not their savior. You can't, if you date a non-Christian, they're going to pull you away from God. See, if you dance with the devil, it's not him that changes, it's you. You're always going to change when you play around with the devil's kids. They're going to, listen, a non-Christian is going to see how far they can take you before you're going to stop. They're going to slowly introduce you to back to the world, the very thing that God brought you out of. They're going to bring you back into Egypt. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a Christian for 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, 20 years, 30 years. God has the same commandment. He said only marry in the Lord. He said do not be an equally yoked together with unbelievers. This is the same command for each one of us. Even if they're a pastor, you better test them out. I see some of your comments. I'm going to get to all, some of the stuff you guys are saying. I'm just going number by number. I promise you, Margaret, I'll get to you. Debbie, I'll promise. Patrick, yes. I'll, uh, Mona, I will get to you. I promise. I know what you guys are thinking because I'm thinking the same thing. So... They're going to pull you away. They're going to try to get you in that sack so fast. And they're going to try. To, they're going to think that they're the ones that are going to get you in that sack. They're, they are the ones that are going to make you compromise. Okay. They're the ones that are going to have you take your clothes off slowly and give you that glass of wine. And wine and dine you. And they're going to take you to places and clubs. And, and they're going to take you to... Um, comedy shows that are ungodly they're going to take you to concerts that are ungodly you're going to get in their car and they're going to have this rebellious music on and you see it's a slow death it's a suicide and all you guys know i'm telling you the truth because we've all been there <laughs> i have too many years ago many years ago i've been there and even till this day I still meet people that say they're Christians and they are imposters. They are sent by the devil. They are con artists and they are 
uh, spirits of Jezebel and narcissism, okay? So, hey, Heather, I see your comments. Alyssa, yep. So, that's the non-Christian. The Bible commands it. Only marry in the Lord. You better vet them out. If they fake their testimony, you better find out if they have a transformed life. If they say, man, I used to do this, but I don't do this anymore because Jesus convicted me. And now I feel broken by my sins. If, they, if they're not broken by their sins and they're claiming to be Christian, they're not Christian. They're not Christian because Christians are broken by nailing Jesus to the cross. They know how wicked they are. We know how wicked we are and we don't deserve anything. But it, had it not been for the grace of God, for his mercies, we would have been consumed. So if we're not at that place that we realize that we're nothing apart from Jesus and they're nothing and they owe him everything, don't date them. Number three, number three, Hey, Margaret says it can take years for, to truly know someone. Absolutely. But you know what? If you pray and say, God, please show me if there's anything in this person that's not of you, that if they're hiding, if they're conning me, if they're fake, if there's something not right, I promise you, I promise you, God will show you quickly. He will show you quickly. But most of us, we ignore the red flags. Okay. We ignore them. We think, you know what? We can deal with that. It's not a big deal. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's got issues. Because you got soul ties. You, you slept with them, you see? You slept with the unbeliever. Now you got soul ties. Now you're stuck and you don't know why you can't get out. And you're stuck in an ungodly, ungodly non-Christian relationship. So, next one. Next one. Number, where am I? Number three. They're not interested in marriage. Listen, listen, y'all, I'm going to teach you something. <laughs> before you even meet someone, before you even contemplate talking to them or courting them, ask them, are they into casual dating or are they looking for a marriage partner? If they say they're into casual dating, they don't know what they're looking for, they're not sure yet, they just got out of another marriage, they just got out of a bad relationship, you should never date them because you're going to be heartbroken. Why? They're telling you where you're at. They're telling, telling you where you're at. If they tell you where they're at, you got to listen to them. You can't change them. Women, you can't change a guy. You can't make him fall in love with you and then all of a sudden see you as something amazing and they want to marry you all of a sudden because it doesn't work that way. Men know what they want. Men are cut and dry. They're not emotional like women. If they tell you they're not looking for marriage or they're just sleep, sleeping around or playing around, you're not going to change them. So if they're not marriage-minded, keep walking. Keep running because you're never going to change his mind, ladies. You're never going to change his mind. Guys, if a woman says she doesn't want to get married right now and she's okay with what, what kind of life she's living, keep walking. You're not going to change her mind. She has made or he has made their free will decision to be alone and to play the field and to do whatever they want to do or just maybe just be alone. Maybe they don't want to get married. Maybe they're just not ready. Maybe they're hurting and they're just not ready. So if they're not ready for marriage, leave them alone. Ask them straight out. How long before you want to get married? If they say, I don't know, maybe two, three, four, five years. Bye. 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 You want somebody that's looking for a wife, ladies. You want, you want a man that says, I'm looking for a wife. I am serious about a woman. I want to marry her. I want to be a husband. I want to take care of a woman. That's the kind of man that you want. I want to, I want to love her like Christ loved the church. That's the kind of man you want. You don't want a guy that says, nah, I just want to play the field. You don't want a woman like that either. If a woman... Is hopping around from relationship to relationship and she doesn't want to get married keep moving along number four number four you want very different things see an equally yoked it doesn't mean two. like you can be two Christians and being equally yoked okay you have to want the same things you have to want like if you have different boundaries let's say 
I have met guys that say, you know what, I think it's okay to be friends with your exes and your ex-girlfriends and or other women when you're married. Eh, no. Done. Done. Because there isn't one man that I have met in my life, even when I was married, that would approve of me having male friends apart from him. <laughs> Those are two different things. That's a boundaryless marriage. You have to affair proof your marriage by having Christ in the center of it and having excellent boundaries, okay? If you have differences, if you want children and they don't, it's not going to work because you're going to resent it. You're going to resent it unless you really love that woman and you're okay with that having children. You have to really be in love with that person and say, before you marry them, and say, you know what? If I'm never going to have children, I'm never going to have children. If, that, if you're okay with that, I've known people that are in love with other people that can never have children. But it's the love. It's the love. If you don't have that kind of love for someone, then don't do it. Because you're going to get divorced because they wanted children and you didn't. Or your in-laws, how to handle them. Or outlaws. You know, if you don't have the same things, you know, if you don't believe in the same sexual appetite, if you don't believe in the same about children and in-laws and ex-laws and, and you don't believe in this and you got different boundaries of what kind of friends to have or what not to have, you're going to end up fighting all the time. You got to find this out when you're courting. You got to find this out right in the beginning. You got to ask a lot of questions because when you meet someone, it's courtship. You're courting them for marriage. You're trying to see, are you going to propose to them? Because that's what's important. Personality's got to clap or got got to mesh. It's got to be easy. Even if you're two Christians, it doesn't mean you have the same vision. You know, if you if you believe the man's the provider and he doesn't believe the man's the provider, don't marry him because he's going to make you work the rest of your life and pay for everything. Okay, if the man does not want to be a provider for you, ladies, ladies, if he doesn't want, if you want different things, okay. If he doesn't want, if he doesn't have the heart of God and he doesn't have the heart of a godly man to say, I'm providing for you. I'm going to give you, I, I got a house for you. I got your car for you. I'm going to take on your bills. I'm going to be the man that God's called me to be. And I, and you have your role too in the home, whatever you guys agree upon. But if you, if he doesn't want to be a provider, then he's going to make you do what the man's supposed to do. So you better talk about this before you let this man have your heart. Or guys, same thing. You better you better let her know what you're expecting because it could be what she doesn't want. So you, you got to get into that right place. Okay, number five. Please share this video. If they're floundering in their walk with God, hey, Nicole, if they're fl floundering right now in their walk with God up and down like, like a roller coaster, they're, they're in the church one week or they're in with God one week and the next week, man, they're having a hard time and they're out at the bars. Then the next week they're back at church. Then the next week they're doing drugs and the next week they're getting drunk and the next week they're back at church and the next week they're like a ship tossed to and fro in the waves. You know, they're a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, according to the book of James. They're like a sh they're like the wave. It's tossed back and forth, back and forth, you know, between two opinions. You know, one week it's God, the next week it's the world. One week it's God, the next, next day it's the world. One moment it's God, the next sentence it's the world. You have, you cannot be with somebody that's half in the world and half in the church, always going, riding the fence. You don't know which week they're on what. Okay, that's an unstable person, whether they're a male or a female. If a woman's like that, listen, guys, if a woman says that I'm a virgin, okay, and she seems like a godly woman in church all her life, and that she's okay with oral sex or anything like that, that's not a godly woman. You understand? And ladies, if a man says that, Hey, we can have oral sex and we can have, we can touch, we can do all this stuff and not have intercourse, but I love Jesus. That's not a godly man. You understand? 
they're floundering in their walk. You can't, their flesh is still there. I mean, they're still in the world. They're, they, they, they claim to be out of Egypt, but Egypt is still in them. Maybe God is doing a work in them and they're not there yet. Or they're just not saved. So you got to find out which one is it. Either one is bad for a long, for a marriage partner. Okay, these are people you should never date. They need to get themselves right with God first before they can lead you or they can be with you. And, and do you understand what I'm saying? You can't, you can't compromise in your walk with God. He, he's coming for a bride without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. So, they're floundering in their walk. Do not be with them. If they're not solid in their walk with Christ, move along. Let them get right with God first so they can walk with you and you guys can walk with God together. Number six, big one. Let me take a glass of sip. I get thirsty. They're unfaithful. Right now, while you're dating them, they're unfaithful. Number six, they have wandering eyes. You catch them in a lie or two. They have already they've already cheated on you. These are examples of being unfaithful. They're abusive to you verbally or physically. These are signs, red flags. They're unfaithful to God. They're unfaithful to you. They're unfaithful while you're dating. They're already lying to you. They're cheating. They're wandering eyes. They're verbally abusive to you. And this goes for women and men both. It's not just one-sided. They're verbally abusing you. They're, they're physical. Listen, if they're, Jesus said if you look after a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. So you think that person's going to change once you marry them and they see you naked? No, they're going to think about all the other women they're looking at while you're naked. They're going to think about all the porn that they're watching while you're naked. They're going to fantasize about all the women that they have been watching porn with while they were sexually doing what they're doing. I'm trying not to be graphic. You guys know what I'm talking about. So they're going to bring it right into the marriage bed. So if, if you're already dealing with unfaithfulness, like wandering eyes, if they're checking people out when you're with them, they're going to check them out when you're, when you're married to them. It's not going to stop. If they're lying to you while you're dating them, if they say a lie to you and you catch them, there's going to be more lies to follow. I guarantee it. There's going to be more lies to follow. Because as soon as you lie in a relationship, it breaks trust. And trust is very difficult to earn back. I mean, the Bible in Proverbs said that a brother offended is harder to win back than a city with gates around it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, like a gated city. A brother offended. I mean... It is such an offense to lie in a relationship. Not that people haven't and they haven't forgiven. I'm just saying if you're dating them or courting them, that's different. In courtship, this is just a precursor to what's coming when you're married. Because when you're married, it's going to get worse. Choose wisely. So if they're unfaithful to you now, if they cheated on you now, let's say you guys broke up and they went and they slept with their ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend and you had a fight one night and they went and did that and they're Christians. Guess what? <laughs> they're they're going to cheat on you when you're married. Because when you guys have a fight and they take off, they're taking off to somebody from their past or some, some booty call that they have sitting there waiting on them. Okay, because... The world is wicked. The world thinks nothing of immorality and sex. I'm trying to get you guys to be somewhat street smart. You can be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. We have to have wisdom, you guys. We are not born yesterday. We are not naive. Naivety is foolishness. We have to be wise. Wise as serpents. Wise. Okay? Ask God for wisdom. So... If they're cheating on you now, they're going to cheat on you when you're married. It's not going to change. If they're lying to you now, they're going to lie to you when you get married. It's not going to change. 
If they have wandering eyes when you're dating, they're going to have wandering eyes when you're married. If they're verbally abusive to you before, while you're dating, they're going to verbally abuse you when you're married. If they're physically causing harm to you in any way or you see signs, it's going to get worse when you get married. These are a precursor to even greater things that are coming because once you're married, you're kind of stuck until they break that marriage covenant. You're just asking for trouble. Number seven, please share this. Please share this. There's a lot of people that need to hear this. Elizabeth says emotional abuse. Yes, emotional abuse is like horrible. If they're emotionally abusing you now, which is verbally abusing you, they're going to do it when you when you marry them. They call on you the B word or the A word and use that, that all these awful words and cussing you out and calling you out of your name. The first time they do it, it's over. The second time they do it, you better, you better make sure it's over. That person is an abuser calling you cuss words and bad words, profanity. It's over. There's no negotiation, you guys. You deserve so much more. You're valuable in God's sight, and you have to protect yourself and be wise. You are, you are, you are valuable in God's sight. You are not just some garbage, okay? You're not garbage. You're valuable. You're loved by the Most High God. You are valuable. And even those that are not, that don't even know Jesus yet that are watching this video, you are valuable. God loves you. You don't deserve to be beaten and verbally abused. Not by your parents. Not by your siblings. Not by your auntie. Not by your children. Not by your spouse. Not by anyone you're dating. You are precious in God's sight. And Satan wants to kill you. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Patrick says abuse will get worse after marriage. Yes. And Olivia says, I went through this. Yes, Olivia, me too. Girl, me too. <laughs> That's why I can talk about it. And I've forgiven all my offenders. They have to stand before a holy God now. Not me. Number seven, we're almost done here. Number seven, addictive personality. Red flag. I got to turn the fan on. Hold on a second. Okay. Red flag, addictive personality. You're dating them. You got to ask them questions, okay? Question, are you addicted to porn? Do you have an issue with pornography? Do you have an issue with drugs? Do you have an issue with alcohol? You've got to find out. Do they have issues with addictions? Are you a codependent? Do you have a codependent personality? Are they addictive? Are they codependent on their parents, on their children? Because you see, you can't change anyone. You can't love them out of it. Jesus has, to, they have to have a Jesus encounter. They have to have a Jesus encounter. They got to get this under control. They got to repent of all their sins before you marry them. Because if you don't, you become codependent. You are the rescuer. You are the one that saves them. You are the one that counsels them. You are the one that always fix, tries to fix them. And you can't fix another human being. You can't even fix yourself. <laughs> Only God can fix you. You see? So if you take on that burden of trying to make someone good when they're bad and they're sinful and they're in a, they're they're addicted to um, porn, listen. If you marry somebody and they're looking at porn, I don't care if it's a male or female. They got all these images in their mind, and when you get naked before them, they see you as an object because they're unable to have that intimacy. You see, they're unable because see, I looked at pornography until. I got saved, okay? So I was almost 25 years old. And there were things that I did looking at pornography that pastors are doing right now and people behind closed doors as Christians are doing right now. And I can speak about it because I came out of it. And when all those images of those videos and those pictures were in my mind, I got rid of all that. You see, I, I burnt it. 
I destroyed the magazines and I destroyed the videos and I destroyed everything that I had, toys and all that stuff. I destroyed all that. We're grown. Come on. I burnt it. I threw it out. It was gone. Out of my marriage. It was gone. So when you have somebody that has looked at porn, they have not repented or they're still looking at it or they, they're going to bring you right into it. You're going to marry them and they're going to say, honey, I'm bored. Let's look at porn together. And you're going to be so broken because you want to please that man. And he's going to bring you into that bedroom and you're going to be looking at the pornography. Then it's going to go into deeper and deeper bondage because that's not going to be enough for you guys. So you have to find a man that's godly, that has repented, that sees how evil that pornography is. And a lot, ladies, a lot of guys lie about this. So you got to ask God to, sh to tell you the truth, to let him expose himself. Listen, I was dating a, well, this pastor was courting me. It was about a year and a half ago. And I asked him if he looked at porn. He goes, no, nope, not at all. For 30 days, I told him what a great man of God he is, and I'm so blessed to meet him. He's such a great man, and I'm so grateful that God has sent him into my life. Such a godly man. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. So one night, we were supposed to go out to dinner. He shows up at my door, comes in, shaking, shaking, sweating. I said, what's going on? He says, I got to tell you something. I said, okay. He says, I lied. I said, about what? He says, looking at porn. When I told you I didn't look at porn, I did about four months ago. I said, really? Okay. I said, well, you repented, right? Well, yeah. I repented, absolutely. I said, how long before that did you look at porn? Huh? The month before that? I said, how long before that? The month before that? How long before that? The month before that? I said, how long have you been looking at porn? My whole life. <laughs> he couldn't take it because I was depicting him as the man that he wasn't and the Lord took over to expose him that he was an ungodly man. You see, because if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't care what y'all say, you can't continue an habitual sin. You can't say, this week I'm going to shoot up drugs, next week I won't. Oh God, I'm going to shoot up drugs next month, but I promise you the next month after I won't shoot up drugs. You see, if you date somebody like that, you're asking for trouble. Some of you guys are laughing. You can't, well, this week I'll look at pornography, but next week I won't. But maybe I'll look at it like once a month. It's not that bad. I mean, I'm not that bad. I'll just look at it once in a while. I'll just get drunk like once in a great while. It's not every day. That's like telling Jesus that you'll be faithful 364 days a year, but just one night a year, Lord, I'm going to do whatever I want. Just that one night, I'm going to go. And I'm going to cheat on you, Lord. I'm going to commit adultery. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to shoot up and I'm going to look at porn. Just that one night. Come on. I've been so good all the other nights. Just give me that one night. I'm, I'm just going to cheat one night. <laughs> you guys are laughing. Because <laughs> you know it's funny. I mean, it's sad. It's sad. But listen, God is so faithful that I have joy because he always shows me things. He's going to show you too. So you can't be with anyone, man or woman. That's unfaithful because God needs to bring them to repentance. And until he does, you ain't going to do it. You can't love them enough to get that evil out of them. They have got to be broken and brought to repentance. So that's number seven. Addictive personality. Let them go. Let God work on them. They're not ready yet. They haven't repented yet. The fear of the Lord hasn't come yet. Number eight. The last one and I'm done. Please share this video. They push boundaries. Oh, Lord, one more step. Hold on. What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to draw a nice adult scenario out for you. And don't tell me you haven't been there. Okay, 
Yeah, Patrick says God made him reveal a sin to you. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. So, listen, they don't respect, they push your boundaries. What does that mean? That means, okay, I meet a guy and I tell him, listen, I ask him, do you believe in sex before marriage? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a Christian. Okay. He knows I don't either. I'm not going to have sex until I get married because God says that all fornicators will have their place in the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. I don't want to go to hell. Do you? I'm, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want God on my bad side, you see. I don't want God mad at me. I don't want Satan to have access to me because he ain't playing. If he couldn't get me and kill me before I was saved, he's surely going to try after I get saved and live in disobedience to God and backslide. So, I'm dating a guy and I'm going out with a guy and he gets alone with me and he's got his hands all over me. His hands all over me. And I keep pushing him away. Take him off me. Okay? And I keep pushing his hands away and his, his hands are trying to go up my shirt or down my pants and I keep pushing his hands away. Come on, we're all adults. We're all adults. A red-blooded man is going to try. If he's not at least trying, there's something wrong with him. Let's talk for real. A red-blooded man, Christian or not, is going to try. If he's not trying, majority of the time, something's wrong with him. Because it can get pretty heated if you got, if you are, you got all this flesh going on. It's very difficult for men to stop. Women usually are the ones that have to stop them. But if that man disrespects your boundaries, or that woman disrespects your boundaries, and she's trying to tear your clothes off, and he's trying to tear your clothes off and unbuckle your pants and take her shirt off and come over your house naked under that raincoat, and he's trying to put your hands where they shouldn't be. Those are called pushing boundaries. That's called disrespect for you as a man or woman of God. If they're trying to do everything but have intercourse with you, boundaries. If they're calling you for booty calls at 1 in the morning or 12 midnight, and that's the only time you hear from them, listen. Listen, y'all. This is for real. I'm talking, I'm talking real. Let's be transparent. This is going on in the church and in the world. If, they're, if you only hear from them in the middle of the night or at night, you are not a cockroach. <laughs> if they only contact you at night, you are not a cockroach coming out. Are you, aren't you worth more than a cockroach? I mean... You're not an animal, a little insect that comes out only in the middle of the night. You are a man or woman of God, and you have to have those boundaries. You have to. I mean, you are. Hey, Nicole, thank you so much. Listen, if they're, if they're calling you with sex talk or sexting, sexting, where's my phone, my other phone? I don't even know where it is. If they're calling you and they're sexting you. You know what sexting is? Sex texting. That means if they're sexually talking to you in a, in a sexual manner, unholy, ungodly, you better block them. Block their number. They're doing it not only to you, but they're doing it to multiple people because they don't fear God. And if they don't fear God, they're not going to love you more then they love God, period. So if they're, they're texting you that way and they, they, they're pushing your boundaries to see how much they can get away with, and you know they're calling you and they're having sex talk with you on the phone, come on, Debbie, that's wonderful. Patrick, yes. William, thank you. If they're talking to you on the phone and they're talking about what they want to do to you sexually, you're done. You see... Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Those are pushing your boundaries. Godly boundaries. If they're trying to get you into bed to have sex with them, that means they don't care about your soul. 
That means if you died right now, they don't care. You're going to die apart from God because you have sinned. The soul that sinneth dies. The soul that sins dies. It's death. Okay? So if they try to get you into that bed and have sex with you and they tell you, oh, I love you, baby. Mm, I never felt this way before. Please share this video. Baby, you're the only one. I've never felt this way. I've never been this much in love with anyone but you. Baby, you are it. Baby, 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 baby. Oh, even the sound of your voice and the touch of your hand just makes me shiver. <laughs> I'm sorry. Baby, I want to marry you. I'm going to marry you. I promise. Even if we have sex, I'm going to marry you. They're going to say whatever they want. And, and they're going to forget your boundaries, you see. They're going to disrespect your boundaries. If you... <laughs> Debbie, Nicole, I know you're laughing, but Christina, you're laughing too. I know, I know, but this is true. This is, we, Nothing new under the sun. God tells us all the same thing. Flee, tempt, flee fornication, flee, run. Run like Joseph did when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. He ran, he was a man of God. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, everybody, I know you guys are laughing, but listen. That woman's going to say, baby, I want to have your babies. I, I'm going to love you. I never felt this way before. You are all man. And they're going, listen, women and men both can have that Jezebel spirit. They're after your purpose and your calling. Okay, they're, they're, they're after your calling. This is a spiritual thing. Okay. They're after you to destroy you. Look at what happened to Samson and Delilah. I mean, Delilah wore out Samson where he told the secret of his anointing. And the Philistines came and they cut his hair off, his long, way longer than mine. Mine's really long. But he cut his hair off and he couldn't break free from the cords when the Philistines were upon him. And they gouged his eyes out, you see. And God, he, he repented and he asked God for forgiveness. And with him being blind, he pushed the pillars in that, in that uh, place where he was at. And, and he killed more Philistines in one night than he did in his whole lifetime. But he did it blind. And what happened to Delilah? She was gone. We never heard about Delilah again. Because he loved the Philistine women. He loved the prostitutes. And his parents warned him, stop going after the prostitutes. Stop going after those women. And he kept going after him. And there's a consequence. There is a sowing and reaping. There is consequences to sin. And when you are with these kind of people that have no boundaries, you know, there, it's going to carry on into the marriage because they're going to have female friends. They're going to have male friends. They're going to have ungodly friends. They're going to have friends at party. They're going to have friends that cuss. And you're going to be sitting at home and they're going to go watch movies that are they're ungodly, they're going to watch paranormal movies, and they're going to celebrate Halloween, and then they're going to go meet their buddies at the bar. These are boundaries. See, you got to have the same boundaries. you got to have godly boundaries. If you don't have godly boundaries, and you don't care about boundaries, this person doesn't care. If they're leading you into bed and sin, man or woman, they're going to have all kinds of other issues too. Let's be real. I'm talking... Yeah, Nicole, masturbation is sin. And you know why masturbation, these, listen, pornography, masturbation, in your unsanctified imagination, you are worshiping to please your own body. It's self-serving. It is selfishness. And when you do this kind of stuff, you take it into the marriage bed and you will never be satisfied with your spouse. Never. You got all these images in your mind. I don't, Listen, listen, you guys. You're, if nobody tells you, I will tell you. Masturbation is sin. It is ungodly. It is ungodly. I don't, you're not going to die if you don't do it. You're going to live. You can live holy. You're not going to die. Okay? You're not going to get sick and, and be in the hospital. Or else God would have told you. 
He said all all the sexually immoral. Sexually immoral means you're imagining in your mind, fantasizing. Whether they have a face or not, you are objectifying someone and fantasizing in your mind with pictures and visions and images, and it is a form of idolatry. Satisfying your own body is a form of idolatry. God is looking for a holy church. He said, be holy as I am holy. That's why there's so many issues in your life, because you don't want to obey God. So these are seven or eight. I did eight. There's more. But those are the biggest ones, you guys. Please share this video. I hope it helped you. I think I'm done now. There's nothing more for me to say. I hope I said everything to help you. Please vet these people out. You have every right to ask all the questions that you want. And if they get angry and they feel like you're interrogating them, run. Run. This is your life. This is your God-given life. You have every right. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much. You have every right. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Nicole. You have every right to ask as many questions as you want for your own well-being and your own safety. Thank you, Gina. You have every right. You are a child of the living God. You are valuable. You are precious in his sight. This is your life. You are trying to yoke up with another person that could take you down quickly for all the things. Thank you, Lena, for all the things that God has done in you. And you're going to take a chance and give it to someone else that's going to steal, kill, and destroy that's going to be used by Satan. Don't do it. And if they feel they get angry at you and they call you self-righteous, and they think you're an interrogator, run. Mona, thank you, a amen to that. Before it's too late, run. Run as fast as you can because this is your life. This is a short life, it's a vapor. 10 years have gone, look at the last 10 years, how fast they've gone, the last five years. Jesus said life is a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. It's like a vapor, you know what a vapor is? It's like something that appears and then poof, it's gone. He says, our life is like a vapor. It's here, poof, poof, and it's gone. So you got to make sure that you're with somebody that values and honors you and honors God, number one. It all stems from God, their relationship with the Lord. And if they don't fear the Lord, and if they don't love Jesus more than they love you, then run, because you're not going to change that in them. So God bless you. I love you. Vet them out. Ask questions. Don't be desperate to be with another person. Just, if you get desperate or lonely, just go to Jesus and cry. Cry to him. Say, Lord, I'm lonely. I have no one. And he'll fill that void and he'll give you joy. Look at my face. This is the face of the Savior, what he's done to me. After all the hell I've been through. Hey, Marlos, after all of the hell I've been through, after all of the rejection and the abuse I've been through. Hey, Michelle, yes. Sweden, there is no, no Christians in this country. Yeah, I believe it. Sweden, yeah. Be alone, Michelle. Give your life to Jesus. It's okay. It's, it's the highest calling you can have. Be alone is better than to compromise. You don't have to. You don't have to be sad being alone. I have joy. Look at my face. Look at my face. This is a testimony that you can go and cry to the lap of Jesus. And he can hold you. And he can love you like you've never been loved. And he can fill that emptiness in you and that void in you that you're trying to fill with sin or the opposite sex. You don't have to. He can love you so deep. Okay, he can love you and he can heal you. And he can touch you, he can care for you.
everything to you.